Hello, hello. I wanted to go live because as many of you guys know, or like many of you guys know, I am away in Florida and I am preparing for a due process, but I'm also relaxing a little bit. As you can see, there's a pool behind me, which is really cool. My daughter has enjoyed that all day. So we're going to get started. I don't have a lot of time, but like you guys know, I'm kind of on vacation, but I'm also working. <laughs> so, hey, Christina, how are you? So this is going to be a tip, but I guess you could say that it is also content because it's really important. So to begin, make sure you guys click notifications, all right, so you know when I go live. Other than that, my name is Raven Woods. I'm the CEO and founder of Autism Mama Rocks IEP, and I help parents gain the knowledge and the confidence to become the CEO of their IEP meeting. So if you haven't caught me live before, welcome. If you are new, post a one below. If you're an oldie but goodie, post a two below. You guys know what to do. So today we're gonna talk about really quick, because I don't wanna take much of your time, plus we're going out to dinner. So in Pensacola, it's gorgeous here, it's hot, and I'm loving it. So Skylar's getting ready to come out here and tell me to do her hair. And so I just wanted to hop on here really quick and talk to you guys about emails. All right. Two seconds, Sky. Okay. Shut the door. All right. So the importance of emails before your IEP meeting, I cannot tell you how important that is. What are you going to go over? Why is it important? Why it is so important to email them before and not, not email them? Should I say that again? <laughs> that just sounded all jacked up. So let me just explain myself. So before I send an email, okay, before an IEP meeting, someone, you know, brings me on, I'm going to become their advocate. They want me to um, take over the email process before the IEP meeting because I've revamped their IEP. I'm going to be supporting them in an IEP meeting, okay? So with that said, I like to take over the, the emails because it sets a precedence, okay? So there's somebody else stepping into into play. There's somebody else um, that is going to be really kind of running that meeting with them, so to speak. And it also lets them know kind of where I stand, if that makes sense. So the first thing I address is number one, especially if it's two-party state, I let them know that they need to plan on recording that meeting. Okay, so that's number one. You let them know that you're going to plan on record that meeting. I personally do not ask permission because as long as you advise them, they have that opportunity to say, no, 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 you're not going to do that, which if they did would be a red flag. Okay, so I always state, we plan to record the IEP meeting. Please also record the meeting as well. Okay, and that's if it's a two party state. One party, I don't say anything. Um, Two-party, I always state, please note that we are going to record the meeting. Please also record the meeting. You also want to make sure you do this seven to ten business days in advance because many districts have a rule, policy, etc. that you have to advise them in advance like that. Okay? So number one is let them know you're going to record in that email. Number two in that email, I don't care if we have it or not. I always, and there's there's a reason for this, guys, okay? But I always say that I want the full scholastic record, all right, and I label what I want. Usually it's the progress report, and it's not the whole thing that you would ask for if you haven't ever received it, okay? I ask for the progress reports. I ask for the last two IEPs, signed IEPs, and I ask for the progress reports that are for the years that the parent wants, depending on their situation. So the most I typically will go back for an IEP meeting is two years, okay? Because that's what you can do on a due process. That's what you can, um, that you really can look at and really get a, get a good idea of what's going on, okay? Then I also let them know that I want them to provide data to support the progress reports that they are going to be providing me. So I ask for data. I ask for progress reports. And the data has to coincide with those progress reports. So I can't, I don't want to see, here's the goals, here's my comments, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever it is they do, because a lot of schools will say, one, they didn't start it, two, they're just starting it, three is like making sufficient progress, 
four is making sufficient progress um, or almost mastered kind of thing and then five is mastered different states do different things but it's somewhat like that but a lot that I've seen recently are just the goals and then comments that's not enough data that doesn't give me data so you want to receive the data that supports those progress reports okay so one again is your uh, that you're going to record number two is you're requesting the records the progress reports the um, the last two IEPs that were signed um, data all right um, you also want to request anything in regards to your particular situation so if you've asked for anything in particular and you haven't received it or they ignored your email I would ask for that as well dependent again on what the parent told me and what they need all right the next thing um, that I typically will do is let them know how I plan to run the meeting now this can be a shocker because a lot of school systems will come at me with oh well we have a, an agenda well how I would respond to that is well that's great I'm so glad that you have an agenda however this is what's going to be talked about in the beginning after everybody introduces themselves and then have edit with your agenda <laughs> okay so I make sure that the parents concerns are taken care of I make sure any questions that the parents have is taken care of I make sure that they've provided me with all the data with the progress reports with the IEPs that I requested and so forth and if they don't before the IEP meeting I note it I say please note on record I requested XYZ and the school district has refused to provide it to the parent so therefore the parent is unable to effectively participate in the IEP meeting due to the fact that the school district refused to provide XYZ okay and that's actually a procedural violation that a school system can do okay if you request certain information that is pertinent to your IEP meeting and without it you can't actively participate as an IEP member which you are the parent then that is a procedural violation against the school system okay procedural violations are huge substantive is not as huge procedural are huge okay that's actually if it's a procedural it can be um, looked at many times and is many times a, um, a disregard of fate and refusal of fate okay so you have every right to request this information always do it before an IEP meeting in an email and make sure it's all documented so you have your recording you have your records that you're requesting so that you have everything together and you're making sure that they understand at the beginning of the meeting everybody's going to introduce themselves and these are the things that you're going to go over and then if they say well we have an agenda that we have to follow okay well that's great have your agenda so i will literally say this is what's going to happen because the parents have every right to have their questions because typically if I'm coming into play a lot of times not only does the IEP totally suck but literally the school system is refusing to respond to the parent and I don't mean that the IEPs suck as in it's your fault I mean the IEPs suck as in people just don't know I sure as heck didn't I had to learn and it's been many years going on 14 that it's taken me to really digest and understand how to write an IEP myself which I could with my eyes closed but it takes a long time and a lot of preparation and to understand how IEP goals are written but I promise you once you get through with me you'll know um, so I'm sorry it's moving up and down it's on my lap I'm not at home so those of you hopping on post a one below if you're new a two below if you're an oldie but goodie okay um, I am away from my home so I apologize <laughs> it's all kind of crazy but I wanted to go live to give you guys this tip um, so the other thing that I will typically do after I note how it's going to go, okay, and I'm not rude about it, but I'm very clear. I'm very strict in the sense of I'm just, it's just straight up, okay, this is how it's going to be. And um, a lot of times they'll come back to me and state, oh, well, we already gave this to the parent. And I'll say, oh, well, you're going to provide it again. And a lot of times they will argue back and forth with me. I cut that off really quick. I said are you refusing to provide this to the parent because they don't have it 
and they'll say, oh, well, we provided it on such and such date. And I tend to believe the parent, hello, why would the parent tell me that they didn't receive a progress report, that they didn't receive such and such data if they did, okay? And even if they did, we lose things sometimes. We are human, okay? So the school system can't then say, oh, well, I already did it, so you don't ever get it again. They don't get to do that. So they do have to provide it again. Hi, Shay. Hi, Marina. Hi, Tony and Heather. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys. So again, two below if you're an oldie but goodie, one below if you are new. So welcome. Make sure you click notifications. Um, so just make sure you're very clear on your emails before the IEP meeting. You want to let them know. You don't want to let them know exactly what will be discussed fully, but you'll want to let them know. I am very clear on the fact I rewrote all the goals, but I'm not going to tell them that in an email, okay? I'll say the parents and myself have a lot of things to discuss that have not been discussed in the past or have been ignored, and these are the things that are going to be taken care of before your so-called agenda, okay? I don't care what their agenda is. They can have their agenda but I'm going to make sure that the parents' needs are met. I'm going to make sure that the parents' questions are answered. And I'm going to make sure that that's completely taken care of so the parent feels secure in what they're doing. And then the school system can have edit at their little agenda. And typically what I will do is I will um, let them know, go ahead, go through the IEP. I kind of let them take control at that point once all of the answers are answered the, of the questions that the parent has. I make sure that they answer them, okay? And um, I make sure that they don't just brush it away. A lot of times the school system will do that, and it drives me absolutely insane. Have you ever been to your IEP meeting, or I'm sure it's happened to you guys, where the school system, you ask a question, okay? You say, hey, you know, this goal right here does not look good. I'm just not sure about it. It's not, I'm just not understanding what it means. And they'll say something like, oh, we'll get back to you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you about that in a second, okay? You know what I'm talking about, right? So if you have a question, don't let the school system push you off and say, oh, we'll come back to it. No, we're talking about it right now. We're talking about it right now because uh, I'll forget. Blame it on yourself, okay? Don't let the school system disregard how you feel. Don't let them disregard what you're trying to address because they need to answer it. We're not going to get to it. We're going to talk about it right now. If you have a question, ask it, and don't let them push you off until that question is answered. That's why I'm really strict about having a bullet point checklist because it keeps you on task. It keeps you focused. You can answer your question, all right? depending on what they say, and don't let them push you off, okay? Don't let them say, we'll come back to it. We'll deal with that, you know, later on when we talk about services. No, let's talk about it right now, okay? Make sure you stick to your guns with that. I can't tell you that enough. Stick to your guns. Don't let them push you forward. They do that. They'll rush you and rush you and rush you, and you're just like kind of clustered, and you get through with that meeting and you're like, oh, I should have addressed all these things. So don't let that happen to you, okay? So take care of that email beforehand and make sure that you read it and read it again and make sure it's thorough and clear and that they understand that in the beginning of that meeting, you're going to address the parent's concerns and what the parent has voiced, at least to me, of what they're worried about. And you want to make sure also that you're clear on the fact that you're going to record that meeting. You don't have to ask if it's a two-party state, okay? Because they're going to come back and say, no, we don't allow you to, you know, record, okay? So just simply state, I plan on recording this meeting on such and such date. Please also plan to record. So offer it to them. Typically, they won't come back and say no if you say, please also plan to record, okay? Um, hi, Heather. How are you? Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> hi, Kristen. Hey, Anna. All right, so yes, post a one below if you're new, a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. So it's just really important to understand the purpose of an email before the meeting. Don't get, don't let the cat out of the bag, okay? Do not let the cat out of the bag. We got to go. We're going to dinner, guys. All right, so don't let the cat out of the bag of everything you want to do, okay? Just make sure you're clear on that you're going to record, 
that you requesting all the data and the progress reports and the IEPs. I don't care if you just received it two weeks before. Okay? Ask for it again because what it is is holding them accountable. All right? And then you want to make sure that you're clear on the fact that um, this is how the IEP meeting in the beginning is going to go. I plan on addressing X, Y, Z. These are the parents' concerns. Or if it's you, you're going to say these are my concerns. This is what needs to be taken care of. And then you're going to move on to, and then you can go for it with your agenda. And please understand that when we get to goals, I have a lot of goals that need to be redone. They don't need to know that I re redid all the goals. I don't tell them all that. But then when it comes to that and they talk about goals, I'll say, oh, I got it. I redid them all. And usually their, their eyes kind of bug out at first and then they just kind of go with it. And sometimes they'll be against it. Sometimes they'll be for it. But I personally don't care because typically I will take their goal and tweak it to make it more smart, all right, which I do that a lot in a pretty major way. Um, and I hate it when they take two or three goals and make it all complicated and it's all jacked up and it's just crazy, all right? There's people on here that are actually on this live right now who will tell you I'm very clear in writing goals that are simplistic. A 10-year-old should be able to pick up your IEP and understand what that goal means, okay? They should understand what that goal means. But listen, guys, I'm on a little bit of a vacation, plus I'm staying with a client that um, I'm working on a due process with, so I have to go because we're all going out to dinner. But I gave you this tip because it's so important, and I want you to do it because it creates a precedence of what you're doing before the IEP meeting, okay? So have a good evening. I promise I'm going to get back on here. Haha, <laughs> they didn't like <laughs> you a lot when you addressed all their mistakes. So that's right, Anna. <laughs> Um, we just had an IEP meeting and it was awesome. They did not like me very much. But um, they did like me at the end, it seemed like, or they were more workable. And I got something that she wanted. I'll let her tell you about that. That's her business. And um, it was a it was a good meeting. Now we got to review that IEP, right, Anna? <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you, Heather. You enjoy the rest of your day. You're welcome, Marina. Um, Nicole, I'm going to get back to you because you wrote kind of a little bit, but I promise I'm going to get back to you. Um, uh, and then Heather, hello. So hello guys. Um, but I'm holding people up. So I got to go to dinner and, um, I'm just excited to be back on here because it seems like it's been forever, but I don't want to be rude either. And it, due process is a crazy thing to prepare for. So, um, but I will be back on here probably tomorrow with some content. Um, but I just wanted to say hello. I wanted to drop in and I just wanted to make sure that I gave you a quick tip. Thank you so much, Anna. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for hopping on. Post a one below if you're new and post a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. I promise I will answer your questions. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye.